This is, again, is an uncertain situation because we don't know when these vehicles, and that's going to end it right there. Now we're going to see what happens with this driver, what he decides to do. Police will try to close in quickly. They will have guns drawn because they don't know what they're going to encounter once the person inside that vehicle tries to get out, if they're able to get out. And again, keep in mind the person who hit them, they could be injured as well. So again, this is not the way they wanted this to end, but we understand that this is happening right around Aldine Mail Route, just off of Highway 59. This man has been leading police on this pursuit for about an hour now. Again, police trying to close in, surrounding this vehicle, deciding what they're going to do next. We'll see if the man is capable of getting out of the vehicle or if he makes that decision to get out. They'll try to see what they can do to take a look inside this vehicle to see how many people are in there. There'll be barking commands. They'll want him to get out. Many times they'll ask him if he can walk. They'll ask him to turn around, walk backwards towards them. Then they'll ask him to get on the ground, and then they'll make the arrest that way. But you see several vehicles have, involved, have been involved in this crash at this point. We understand there were some children apparently in the vehicle that hit this black pickup truck. We're hoping that they're all right. Uh, police will try to do whatever they can to get them attention immediately and try to get the emergency personnel on the scene to treat those people. Hopefully it's nothing serious. But again, that's what happens when you're blowing through these intersections, trying to elude police. No one can see what you're trying to do and certainly don't expect this to happen in the middle of the day. They're just obeying traffic laws, following the traffic signals. And that's how that truck was T-boned and how this chase came to a conclusion. But again, it's still not over because we have to see how this is going to end with police. Again, they'll be barking commands. You see on the top right of your screen, they also have a dog. Sometimes they will send in that dog if the suspect refuses to cooperate. We'll see if he's able, physically able, to get out. But we do know that that crash happened on the passenger side of the vehicle. So... He didn't receive the full brunt of the impact, but he did also roll into that other black truck that's currently on the scene. And you see how cautious police are, because again, this guy's been leading them on a chase for a good hour now. He refused to stop. They don't know why. They may have some suspicions as to why. Uh, they may believe he was armed because the way he was, he was acting, the way he was refusing to stop. And now this right here again is the dangerous part of how this could all play out. All we can do at this point is just sit back and watch. You would think that at this point they do have some type of communication with the person if he is conscious. But again, they are being extraordinarily cautious at this point. Officers with guns drawn. Again, take a look at the top right of your screen. That's the police canine who's on the scene. Dogs can be very effective in a situation like this and also very persuasive because most people don't like to encounter a growling, snarling, aggressive German Shepherd, sometimes a Belgian Malinois, which is what HPD uses as well. Under these circumstances, any confrontation, any kind of standoff here gets really complicated, especially if bullets start to fly. People can certainly get hurt. People can get killed, especially innocent people. And this intersection has been completely shut down at this point. Again, the suspect at this point shows no signs of trying to leave that vehicle. And officers have withdrawn and have pulled back. Several ambulances have also been called at this point to treat others who may have been injured on the scene because of this crash. We know there was one vehicle that T-boned this truck. That was a head-on collision. So we're not sure what damage, what type of injury that collision caused. We're certainly hoping and praying for the best. We do understand that a couple of children may have been taken from that vehicle that hit this truck. But again, it's still unclear. They have support people behind them. And again, the dog there now on the top left with the canine officer. So you can see the impact was definitely enough to 
inflate and then deflate those airbags, those are the side airbags. They now have one person out. We'll see if that's the only person who's in there. He's now on the ground. He'll be handcuffed and taken away. So this is the conclusion of this chase that was happening for about an hour here in the northeast part of town. Again, we know at this point that he will be facing felony, evading arrest charges, but it's unclear exactly what else and why they were pursuing him to begin with. But there is no escape at this point. This one has come to the conclusion. Now our focus will certainly be on the people who may have been injured in this crash, people who were inadvertently brought into this scene, just trying to go along with their normal day, uh, picking up kids from schools, running errands, whatever it may be. They ran into this chase vehicle, that black Chevy pickup truck, Again, the suspect riding on the rims, desperate apparently to get away, but not in this case because he involves somebody else. And again, you see the conclusion over on the left-hand side of your screen. That's the small box over there. And again, if someone is hurt or killed during this pursuit, this price is really going to go up, possibly aggravated assault with a deadly weapon or vehicular homicide. We never know. Certainly praying for the best with those people. This next will move to the investigation mode. As you see, they're ready to take that suspect away. We'll take a look at where the most serious crimes took place and the lead agency will then take the lead in that. Officers, the victims, the witness will all have to be interviewed. Was police procedure followed? Was all of this necessary? Thankfully, no bullets have to be accounted for here. No shots were fired. And it, again, it appears that there was only one person in that vehicle. He's the one who's in custody there, it appears. But you've seen the dramatic conclusion there to this police pursuit. Started again about an hour ago. It ended in a crash in the middle of an intersection there on the northwest side of town. Officers had their guns drawn. They were able to haul that suspect out of the vehicle. Now they'll take him back downtown where he will be booked. We're going to be working in the meantime to find out just exactly why he was running, try to talk to some people who were there involved in that pursuit. We'll also continue to try to find out exactly what happened to the person in that vehicle right in the middle of your screen there, just below that traffic signal, because that's the one that T-boned that truck as that truck was illegally going through the intersection. That car, that silver car in the middle of your screen where we're zooming in, is the one that had the right-of-way going through that intersection. We believe at this point there may have been children in that vehicle. We understand that police and emergency personnel were taking them out of that vehicle and escorting them away as we zoom in. But again, it is unclear on their condition. But you see the extent of the damage on the front of that vehicle that T-boned the black truck as it made its way through that intersection. See, police will be wrapping this up. And again, this is going into the investigative phase, trying to find out exactly what happened and what they may be able to do differently next time to avoid this type of ending. We're understanding several ambulances have been called to the scene. We know that at least one innocent bystander was involved. We also believe that perhaps another, another truck uh, that was hit during the spin out may have also been involved. Uh, we don't know their condition. We're still trying to find that out. But again, you see how many police vehicles are currently on the scene. So again, this is the conclusion of a police chase that was taking place in the northeast part of town, northeast Houston. One suspect has been taken into custody. He certainly will be facing evading arrest charges and who knows what else by the time this is over because this led to a violent crash there at that intersection. We're going to be in the meantime between now and our 4 o'clock newscast doing the best to find out more about how this happened, why this started, why they were chasing this particular suspect, why he refused to stop and also trying to find out more about the people involved in that silver, apparently a Cadillac there in the middle of your screen 
uh, that was damaged severely when it T-boned that truck in the middle of the intersection. In the meantime, traffic in this part of town is certainly going to be tied up for a while. As I try but, uh, you know, that one guy, uh, well, let's see, it looks like he might be coming out of the vehicle here. And so that is certainly some good news there. The door is certainly open. It looks like we have arms out, arms up. And uh, this is some good news here. This is uh, the best possible scenario for this guy here, given the fact that he's been uh, engaging with officers this whole time. But uh, there he goes, arms up. He's backing up towards officers here. And it looks like uh, he is about ready to uh, give up at this point here. Uh, you know, given the cat and mouse nature of this uh, pursuit, uh, I'm sure officers are going to be uh, using an abundance of caution here, given the fact that uh, you know he's been uh, so hit and miss here. Uh, is he going to make a run for the uh, make a run for the uh, Honda and uh, take off again? But uh, now he's he's kind of proned out on the floor, right in that turn lane, and uh, it looks like uh, pursued here a long uh, game of cat and mouse with the LAPD and the CHP. But uh, there you go, a team of officers kind of assembling here, and they will at some point make their approach uh, to him and to the vehicle to clear the vehicle. Again, we don't know uh, if there was anyone else in the vehicle here to this point. We believe there was only the driver, uh, but that was never confirmed. Uh, so hopefully that uh, remains to be the case. But uh, nevertheless, that will be uh, something that the LAPD deals with at, uh, at the point that they take the driver into custody. They will, uh, again, clear the vehicle here. But uh, the driver, again, prone out. Um, on Sherman Way, just a little bit to west of uh, Coldwater Canyon here, where he had a spike strip waiting for him. But uh, there's a team of officers, at least, uh, what, five officers right there. And uh, they're going to make their approach to him, guns drawn, uh, just in case. Uh, you know, remember, this guy was reported to have a weapon, a, a handgun at that point. And so, uh, but it looks like, uh, you know, they will be able to successfully take this guy into custody and in a peaceful manner here. A secondary team of officers you see at the back of the Honda Odyssey, and they are uh, looking in the windows to make sure no one's there, looking for weapons, obviously, but uh, at some point they will uh, give the code four uh, just to make sure that uh, everyone is safe and uh, everything is cleared from that vehicle here. But uh, there's the driver in custody. Again, uh, this is going to be on Sherman Way, eastbound just before Coldwater Canyon, where traffic has come to a standstill as uh, the police officers deal with this but uh, the best possible scenario here again the LAPD and the CHP doing a great job in keeping everyone safe um, you know uh, not to mention the fact that uh, these guys were very patient in their tactics and very uh, skillful in, uh, in conducting their operation here but they have taken this guy into custody here they have uh, essentially cleared the vehicle and uh, over the course of the next several minutes hopefully they will have this intersection cleared again Sherman Way eastbound right at Coldwater Canyon Eric Oh, look at this. He's going to hit the center divider, hits the center divider. This is going to come to an end right here. Uh, it's all over. He lost control of the vehicle. Those tires sa said enough's enough. And now the driver's pinned there against the K rail, the center divider of the freeway. And his only exit point is going to be out either a window or the uh, passenger side of the vehicle, the car. I'm going to push back in on the doubler here and get a look at what the driver's doing. He's got his hand out the window, windows down, both hands out the window, his head out the window. He still has a seatbelt on. Again, this is standby. Camino de los, near Camino de los Mares, uh, north of Camino de los Mares. Southbound, fi southbound five, the keys, he just threw out the keys. And now they're ordering the driver to get out of the vehicle. Southbound five, yeah. this is just past uh, Camino Los Rambles. Okay, looks like the driver's moving over to the passenger side, doors opening. I'm gonna push in with the doubler here to get a, a better look. We're a little bit away from him, but that's okay. He's surrendering, he's got his hands up. 
No weapon seen here. They're going to check that vehicle. Come out of my doubler and get a better quality there. There you go. Taking his shirt off. Now the CHP can see his waistband to see if there's any weapons in his waistband. He's going to go down to the ground. He's complying completely with officers here. This pursuit ending. Suspect looked like he has some tattoos on his back. Laying down flat as ordered by the CHP in the number two lane. Now they're going to make their approach on the vehicle. To clear the vehicle, they're going to take him into custody in this pursuit ending a very crazy, wild pursuit. Ending uh, very close to the Dana Point area. Look at this, the five freeway, southbound five shut down completely as they do the felony stop. Awesome, thank you. We're into Santiago. Guns drawn, the officers are gonna put together a team to make approach on the car. It looks like they have a canine unit as well. There's the canine unit. Right there, he's gonna They're asking the helicopter overhead to see if they have any kind of heat heat sources inside the, the suspect vehicle to see if there's any other potential suspects in the vehicle. Okay, they're asking, they're telling him to get up. Suspect putting his hands behind his back. He's gonna walk backwards to the officers. They're gonna get him in cuffs and then they're gonna make the approach on the vehicle to check that out. This, sus this suspect wanted for a drive-by shooting in Whittier. Airship overhead saying that the back seat looks a little warm in the vehicle. They're able to look with an infrared camera to see if uh, there's anybody else in there. They're saying the back seat looks a little warm. It could be that the car was traveling such a high rate of speed. Go ahead, Jack. Okay. Copy that. Seal Beach, 405. They're saying that there, uh, the, there might be a heat source in the trunk, but again, this car was traveling at a high rate of speed. We're going to move on to another story. Thanks for watching this pursuit. Crazy pursuit ending down in the, front, it was started in Whittier, ending up in the Dana Point area on the southbound five. live coverage it looks like now this end of this police chase that the front door of the suspect vehicle has opened uh, we're going to try and zoom in a little bit more it looks like someone is coming out of the car uh, we're, we're we're panned out a little bit now uh, this the police are trying to get this person to surrender and have been for about the past 20 minutes so this is a big development here this is the end of a police chase carlton and south acres school nearby on lockdown people being asked to stay in their homes uh, we're going to try and get in a little bit closer. Police do have their guns trained on not only the vehicle, but the person inside, possibly more than one person. We have not seen any movement until this point. But now at 2.13, an hour after this chase started, a person is coming out. Their hands are up. They're stepping out of the vehicle. Windshield wipers are still on. Unclear if anyone else is inside, but that person has their hands up. They are backing away. It looks like they are surrendering to police at this point. It looks like a man that we see there. He is backing up. Police have their guns trained on him, asking him to surrender. This is the end of a police chase. Carlton and South Acres in southeast Houston, very near an elementary school, Woodson Leadership Academy. That school on lockdown at this moment. This could be the end of what was a long chase uh, and a long standoff with police here in southeast Houston. Uh, guns trained on this person. It looks like he's inching back to officers. It appears that he's following their instructions to this point. This has been a very, very long standoff. He is getting on the ground, kneeling on the ground now. Uh, surrendering police. They are moving in now. HPD is moving in to arrest this person. Their guns are still trained on the vehicle. Remember, this car has very, very tinted windows, so we don't know if there's anybody else inside. But this looks like...
the driver of this vehicle that led police on a very long chase, an erratic chase in southeast Houston, has finally surrendered. Uh, he's being frisked down by that officer in the back of that police car uh, as Sky 2 zooms in live coverage uh, over the air and on the ground here. We're going to continue to stay with us until this scene is clearly over. At this point, one person came out of the vehicle. That is the driver. He has surrendered. He has been arrested by police, Houston police. Uh, off camera, though, officers are approaching that car to make sure that no, there's nobody else inside. We could not see if that person was armed. I imagine if he had a weapon on him. Officers would have removed it at that point. Officers did frisk him down as they put him back in this police car. That person has been arrested. Uh, as we zoom out now and into the car, officers are now searching the vehicle, going through uh, the front doors, the back doors, and the trunk to make sure, A, that nobody else is inside, and B, that they don't find any weapons or illicit material or dangerous material inside of the vehicle. But it appears for now that the immediate danger is over. Now in the city of Miami, at last check, we got a report that this was 34th and 14th Avenue there in the city of Miami. We uh, are going to keep 7 Sky Force there over this scene. As you can see, this is going at a very high rate of speed on the streets of Miami. It's unclear exactly why they are pursuing this vehicle. The 7 News Desk has several calls into both police in Miami and also the Miami-Dade Police Department to figure out why they're pursuing this vehicle, but no doubt a very tense situation on the streets of Miami at this hour as there is this police pursuit that is underway. This is ex going north at this hour at 62nd Street and 14th Avenue there in the city of Miami. Residential streets, a very tense situation there as uh, police pursue this vehicle. You can see it's the red vehicle. Seven Sky Force is trained here on this vehicle and the driver is not stopping. Going through red lights into oncoming traffic, it appears at this time, uh, a very dangerous situation. Another update on the area he's at. This is 72nd Street and 17th Avenue in the city of Miami. As you can see, he's going through a uh, uh, appears to be possible a driver, man or woman, going through the intersection there, passing a county bus, a cruiser there hot on his trail, now making a left. Again, this is in the area of 72nd Street and 17th Avenue there in the city of Miami. Going on to residential streets now as this pursuit continues. Again, we don't know why the pursuit is underway, why police are following this driver, male or female, We're, we don't know at this hour, but uh, they are hot on the trail of this person. The 7 News Desk has several calls out to try to figure this one out, but again, this is a red mercury that police are pursuing in the area of 81st Street now and 18th Avenue. The driver does not stop, and as you can see, there is a cruiser close on his tail, now turning right. Uh, that's a city of Miami police officer right behind him, making a right here. This, again, is in the area of 81st Terrace and 18th Avenue. Uh, Seven Sky Force will continue to be on this uh, scene as this man weaves through traffic in the city of Miami trying to elude police. As you can see, another officer uh, just came in there trying to uh, stop him, but he, uh, he is speeding up, it appears. This, again, is now at 22nd Avenue, uh, northbound in the area of the city of Miami. High rates of speed on these residential and side streets as this man or woman, the driver, passes all vehicles near him. Seven Sky Force is going to continue to train on these uh, on, on this picture, and uh, as we monitor and what he, what he does next. Again, this is Twenty uh, Second Avenue and Bird Road. Now, now uh, at Ninety Second Street and Twenty Second Avenue in uh, Northwest Miami Dade. Now moving from the city of Miami to Northwest Miami Dade. As you can see, at least three units are behind this vehicle at this hour trying to get him to stop, hasn't, and this is high rates of speed. There is a school bus on the other side of the road there as this driver, man or woman, blows through red lights, stop signs at a high rate of speed. Again, both the city of Miami and it appears now Northwest Miami-Dade uh, Miami -Dade police are pursuing this vehicle. Doesn't appear to stop there as he makes a right-hand turn as this chase continues 
across South Florida. Again, the, the latest information we have now is 103rd Street going eastbound at 103rd Street in Northwest Miami-Dade. So uh, he appears to go eastbound, possibly towards uh, I-95 at this time, but still on these uh, side streets and 103rd Street is the area he's at right now. High rates of speed, lots of traffic, and uh, we'll see what he does here. Goes through this, goes through this intersection, doesn't stop, makes a left there, and we'll get an update on what street he's on now. But this continues here on the streets of South Florida at this hour. A high speed chase across South Florida, Northwest Miami Dade. The latest information: he's at 17th Avenue and 103rd Street now. So uh, this pursuit continues. At least three units behind him, both. Miami-Dade police as well as the city of Miami blowing through that intersection right there. Uh, again, this is a red mercury. We don't know why police are chasing the vehicle at this time. Uh, we have those calls in to the 7 News Desk. They're trying to figure that out. Again, the latest information, 17th Avenue and 103rd Street. The, right, uh, the front right tire is low on the suspect car. That's the information that the 7 News Desk has just uh, received, now making a right, blowing through, uh, blowing through intersections and not stopping. As you can see here, he goes through a highway, uh, he's going through a, on a high rate of speed. Now he's on 119th Street going eastbound. Eastbound, 119th Street uh, in the center lane there, police hot on his trail. At times when we've done these stories before, police, oh, and going onto the sidewalk there, a police officer then trying to stop in front of him, the driver then getting back into the lanes of traffic, now going through another intersection there. This is 119th Street going eastbound at this hour. Now he's going into a turn lane. It appears he's going to turn, didn't make a U-turn there. Oh, trying to make a U-turn, now going into a parking lot. This seems to be a dead end and the driver there uh, just crashed there into an into a wall it appears police officers now out with their guns surrounding this vehicle surrounding this vehicle the driver is coming out with his hands up you can see his hands up there police have a dog hot there on his trail they are they are ordering him to get out of the vehicle he appears to have gotten back into the vehicle now an officer is there, looked to be trapped. Now he's, he's gotten back into the vehicle. He has gotten back into the vehicle. The dogs are now in the vehicle trying to get this man to stop. An officer there was in, it appeared to be danger as this man backed out trying to get away. This is a very, very tense situation. Again, we remind all our viewers, this is live television at this hour. Anything could unfold. This is live pictures. Again, this man appeared to stop. Now he appears to be getting out of the vehicle. We do not know how he is now out of the vehicle. Police, as you can see, have surrounded him. They are attempting to put him into custody at this hour. Again, uh, they had a dog there in the vehicle at one point, and that is when the driver appeared to get back in the vehicle and, and reverse. We don't know if he was injured or shot in any of this, but this man is now in custody. It was definitely a tense situation there. This has ended in the area of Northwest Miami-Dade. And the suspect, as you saw there in the live pictures, was backing up and appeared to put officers there in danger. As you can see, there appeared to be at least a dozen officers around this man as this chase comes to an end. Again, live pictures from Northwest Miami-Dade. We still don't know why police were pursuing this man but uh, as you can see, they appear to be taking him off now. He's behind the tree there. Again, this started in the area of downtown. Miami has wound its way throughout the, uh, throughout the South Florida streets. It ended at 119th Street and 11th Avenue in North Miami. As you can see, this man uh, now being put in a police car there. Again, this came to an end a short time ago when he crashed into a wall, then got back into the vehicle, and uh, officers then put a dog there 
into the vehicle and they were able to get him into custody. Again, this transpired throughout the streets of South Florida. It, it has ended at 119th Street and 11th Avenue in North Miami. And you watched it all unfold here on 7 News. And you can see just how many officers are here in this area. You can see plenty of the police officers from several uh, from several agencies from both the city of Miami and uh, Miami-Dade. Again, it was this red mercury that police were pursuing from uh, the city of downtown, from downtown Miami. It ended in North Miami. Again, uh, a short time ago, the man is being either taken to jail at this hour or whether he needs to be checked out after being injured by that dog to the police department there. Uh, again, we don't have a reference why police were pursuing the vehicle, but no doubt a tense situation throughout South Florida here in Southwest Miami-Dade. Uh, we're going to keep, keep we'll, uh, we're going to keep the Seven Sky Force there as this situation continues to unfold. Again, this is 119th Street and 11th Avenue in North Miami. We may have some video to show you as this chase ended. If we could, if we can cue that up, we'll, uh, okay, here, here's the end of the chase again. This happened a few minutes ago. This man hits hits a barricade there he gets out of the vehicle you'll you'll be able to see him with his hands there on on his uh in the air and that is when he gets back in the vehicle he'll get back in the vehicle as police surround this surround this uh red mercury with uh with dogs as well and here's the incident that uh put an officer in danger as the as the driver backs out the officer there and the dog have to get out of the way quickly and there you'll see the dog jump there into the mercury and that is when the suspect is taken into custody a short time ago again this happened this ended at 119th street and 11th avenue in north miami the suspect now is either being taken to the hospital or to or to jail at this hour so again uh, a wild pursuit throughout the streets of south florida plenty of police both from the city of Miami and Miami-Dade there on the scene following this red mercury across South Florida. It went from the city of Miami, northwest Miami-Dade, and then ended here in North Miami a short time ago. Again, 119th Street and 11th Avenue in North Miami. The suspect, we are trying to figure out whether he, where he is being taken at this time or why police were pursuing him. But the uh, red vehicle there is the one that police were pursuing throughout the streets here in North, uh, throughout the South Florida streets. You just saw the Miami-Dade police chopper there that was on the scene. And this is from a short time ago. As police were pursuing this vehicle, high rates of, spe high rates of speed at time, this man was going through uh, through intersections, going uh, at a high rate of speed throughout intersections across South Florida. Uh, police from both Miami and Miami-Dade were hot on his trail, and uh, of course, we are going. We have several uh, Seven News reporters going to the end of this situation at 119th Street and 11th Avenue, where this ended of course we will have a full report coming up on seven news first at four throughout the day here so you'll want to stay with us as we continue and we're going to send you back to regular programming now stay with us for the latest here on seven the high-speed chase doesn't end until the man makes a wrong turn and slams into a dumpster cops their guns drawn surround the red nissan ultima the man gets out of the car with his hands up, but when an officer with a canine approaches, he gets back in and puts the car in reverse. An officer on the passenger side with another canine has to move quickly to avoid being sandwiched between the car and the parked Jeep. As the driver backs up, he slams into a Miami-Dade police squad car. Officers then send a canine into the car. A second canine moves in, but latches on and bites the leg of the other police dog. I just hear the crash. The chase and takedown happened next to Kanakito Restaurant at Northwest 11th Avenue and 119th Street. Patricia Martinez and her six-month-old daughter were eating on the outdoor patio. That guy's crazy. He's, that was dangerous. Another customer ran. Oh, yes. 
Oh, yes, we, we run away. I went inside the bathroom because that's the safety play that I think about. Police say they... A situation there on the roadways. Uh, good. Oh, it's almost afternoon, the almost the noon hour here. We are in Skyforce HD over a police pursuit here. This is a police vehicle, a uh, uh, motorman following along with a county vehicle, following a red uh, car that's believed to have been involved in a shooting that occurred in Hollandale about uh, 10 minutes ago or so. Uh, they put out a description of that vehicle and it was spotted on I-95 up there in Hollandale. Uh, the address they gave me was 916 Northwest 10th Street. A double shooting occurred there uh, in front of a residence and uh, the vehicle that fled fits this description. Uh, the uh, police officers are following now. They've been trying to get the vehicle to stop here on I-95. It is in the HOV lanes. Let me brighten the camera up there a little bit for you as it continues southbound here. Uh, that's the extent of the information that we have is that they are trying to get the vehicle to stop. The Broward Sheriff's Office asked for assistance from the county and from uh, other agencies down here in Miami as the vehicle fled out of their jurisdiction. You can see right now we have a, um, a Miami-Dade cruiser there along with a uh, uniformed police officer on his motorcycle and the red vehicle, the red vehicle in question. Now there's another vehicle there, that uh, Challenger or Charger right there that's adjacent to the vehicle, trying to get that vehicle to slow down. It is. It does fit the description of the vehicle that they were looking for. Uh, there were supposed to be two occupants in that uh, vehicle, and now, uh, and now they're paralleling that vehicle. And uh, if, if you give me one second here, just to regroup a little bit and uh, get my scanner back up a little bit higher, I can find out exactly. But they are, they are going to follow this vehicle. They are trying to get the vehicle to stop. It is now pulling over. And it's uh, uh, doing a lane change here. Now we have one vehicle in front of it and uh, several vehicles behind it. They are trying to get it to stop here. We are at about uh, 62nd Street, a little south of 62nd. I'm looking out my window here. Actually make it about 46th Street, stopping in the middle. We got a bailout, uh, one person there. Uh, being pursued now by the police. They're taking off after him. The other person has stayed in the vehicle. We've got police officers chasing. He jumped over the uh, guardrail here and uh, flipped down off the embankment here. We've got some other officers. It looks like he's been tased or he's hurt himself uh, jumping off that uh, over that ledge right there. Joe, can we slide back just a touch? And we have one guy and uh, he's, he's uh, incapacitated here on the ground just outside of the I-95 expressway. Approximately, we're going to uh, revise our address here. We're going to put it closer to 25th Street or 26th Street and I-95. You see the two uh, Miami-Dade police officers there trying to clear the hurdle of the fence. Uh, we're going to uh, put our extender in here and zoom in a little bit more. You can see the guy laying on his side right there. Uh, it appears to be as we said, incapacitated, unknown whether he injured himself jumping over or whether he was tased by the police as they went over. We lost uh, our location there for a second as they, uh, he's got his hands raised. He's complying with police orders to uh, give himself up. We're going to stay with this shot for a second. Uh, just to tell you that traffic is ground to a halt on I-95 southbound. Uh, this all happening in about the last 10 minutes out of Hallandale. As we said, there was a shooting, a double shooting occurred uh, at, at that location. Uh, the location I gave you, 916 or 996, I'm sorry, Northwest 10th Street in Hallandale. And uh, the vehicle fled the area. The, the shooters are uh, believed to be in, in that car. They got a description of the vehicle. They boloed it out, which is a be on the lookout for that uh, for that uh, vehicle. It was spotted on I-95. Broward Sheriff's Office was following, asked for assistance from the county. You saw the takedown live here on WSCN. And uh, that's pretty much what we have for you right now. All right, Ralph, just to recap then what we've seen in the last couple of minutes, because it has been a lot in a very short amount of time. You say that this started as a double shooting in Hallandale on 996 Northeast, Northwest 10th Street. Then this police pursuit ensued on I-95. Now, in that vehicle, were there two people or just the one that we saw bail out? Well, we have another one in handcuffs right here, so we're going to go with two for now. Those are the, we saw the... Uh, uh, one person bail out there where uh, they look like now they're going to be processing him and getting him in the back of a police car. You can see the roadway here. Colors. Actually, we've got a third suspect here. I was going to call them suspects or subjects as they are taken into custody by police. So you've got one being put in the back of car number 19434, and you've got one leaning over the back of car 17268. And then the third uh, person is over here uh, in the tall grass where these uh, other vehicles stopped right here. They're standing over the guy right now. I, we understand that fire rescue has been called uh, to the scene here uh, to uh, render aid in, in this uh, because there may be an injury uh, to one of these people that uh, fled from the police when that vehicle stopped right in the middle of I-95.
Yeah, and just thinking about how it all ended right there when that vehicle stopped in the middle of 95 with traffic still going, no other vehicles were involved in any type of accident or anything as this came to an end? Uh, well, you know, uh, we we kind of trained the uh, camera off of that activity to follow the person running. But right now, let me just bring the camera back out here and show you. You can see there's traffic that has stopped here. It backs up from about 25th Street here just to uh, before the 112 Expressway on the south side of it. So there is traffic there. There are a lot of onlookers now, and uh, police are trying to process this as quickly as possible. Of course, this becomes a... I guess a part of a crime scene here is they uh, t t took uh, several subjects in custody right here when they took them out of this red vehicle, including the one that ran over the uh, over the embankment there, jumped over the embankment and ended up uh, laying on his back here, the guy in the white and the blue. There are two officers now with him in custody. And uh, back to you guys. And Ralph, we see that there are three suspects there in police custody. The other two, did they stay in the car? They apparently did not try to run? Well, the, again, we were following the other activity, so that when the cameras, wherever the cameras trained is where we're looking, we saw the one person jump out when we swung the camera back over. Both of them were in handcuffs, appeared to be complying with police, so they may have decided it was not a good idea to flee there in the middle of I-95 uh, during regular traffic hours there. So they, uh, they were, but they were taken into custody and being processed as we swung the camera back over there. Ralph, okay, as you stay with us, it has certainly been a busy day in the 7 Newsplex and a busy day for you. Uh, it started with that traffic nightmare that we covered earlier today, and now this on I-95. Just to recap, for those of you who m might be joining us at this hour, a double shooting on Hallandale Beach at 996 Northwest 10th Street. Then police issue a be on the lookout for an ending to all this uh, on 95 southbound at 26th Street, roughly, and there you see that suspect now in police custody as well. In all, we're talking about three people in police custody at this hour. Their role in all of this, the bigger picture, that's still unclear, but we can certainly tell you what a mess. Just at this point, really just picking up information, trying to get details to be able to report them to you. All right, Brandon, we appreciate that. Keep gathering details for us on that end. And in the meantime, you're looking at live pictures on your screen. Seven News at noon on the scene of a developing story. Several people in custody at this hour after what started as a shooting ends with a chase, then a bailout. Now three people in custody as we continue to sort through the details of all this. Seven's Ralph Rayburn was there when it started and is here now to fill us in on more. Ralph. Well, uh, uh, let's just uh, backtrack and tell you that on our way to the, uh, the tanker accident, which was going to be our noon live shot, we heard a call and we shared that information with our Broward desk. Our desk uh, uh, heard the same information but, uh, and then diverted us uh, to head toward I-95. And we did. Uh, we could uh, hear, hear the chase coming southbound on the radio uh, for, through the Golden Glades interchange. And then as it approached 103rd Street, they uh, temporarily lost sight of that red vehicle that we showed you a little bit earlier. Uh, then the Broward Sheriff's Office got on the radio and said that they were behind the vehicle and uh, that it was refusing to stop. They asked, uh, requested uh, assistance from an aviation unit from the county. I don't know whether that unit ever launched or not, but uh, we were out there. We uh, saw the vehicle, the red vehicle, as it was described, coming southbound in the HOV lanes at a pretty good clip, a pretty high rate of speed there, uh, not complying with the officer who had the uh, uh, motorman who had his uh, lights and siren on and uh, uh, trying to get the uh, vehicle to pull over. It passed uh, 79th Street and went through, uh, by the 112 uh, in traffic and then uh, several other uh, Miami-Dade cruisers uh, pulled up, one alongside of it, and then that, that one was able to get in front of it and force it out of the HOV lanes. It appeared for a moment that they were going to stop, but just pull off the side of the road and stop, but it stopped right in the middle of I-95 and the passenger side front door opened and a uh, one of the uh, people inside that vehicle bolted into traffic and was nearly clipped by a vehicle uh, that was passing on the right hand side there uh, the uh, uh occupants, the police occupants of the other the vehicles that were pursuing uh, uh, got out of their vehicles and ran after that one suspect as the other people that appear, appeared to remain in the vehicle, including the driver, uh, they were taken into custody. We saw them in handcuffs. In the meantime, the person that jumped out of the passenger side front seat uh, 
jumped over the guardrail and over the fence there on the retaining wall and tumbled down. And we could not tell whether he, because of the trees and the uh, ground cover, we couldn't tell whether or not he was injured from the fall or if he just gave himself up. But he is in police custody now. He's being walked by police to a waiting police car here off the side of the roadway, off of I-95 at uh, approximately uh, 23rd or 24th Street on the uh, west side of I-95. As we bring the camera back out here, we've been watching them process. Here on I-95, you can see traffic merging uh, to the uh, to the HOV lanes or to the center lanes there. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, four lanes of traffic that are blocked there. The red car remains in the middle of the road, and they're going to be processing. That's our story here at Skyforce HD. I'm Ralph Raven reporting live.